This tablet can game at 4K, despite not having a dedicated GPU. Sure, not always at 60 FPS or high settings, but every game I've tested for today's video was somewhat playable either due to lowering the settings or using FSR for upscaling. One reason for that is the 16GB of VRAM we can assign for the Radeon 8060S in this ASUS ROG Flow Z13, while it still has 16GB of system RAM left when doing so. I know this was never designed as a 4K gaming tablet, it doesn't even have a 4K screen. It actually utilizes a 2560x1600p screen with 180Hz. But that doesn't mean you can't attach it to your 4K TV and have some fun with it. I mean, sure, we won't be able to play multiplayer games like Apex Legends here with high FPS at 4K... Okay, okay wait, 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 yes, yes we can. 4K native, with low settings and the texture set to 4GB, we can actually get around 112 FPS on average here. I guess at 1440p we just hit the game's default FPS cap of 144 FPS, at least with low settings, so, well, we can play high FPS games at 4K on this tablet. Alright, but I'm pretty sure in Fortnite this won't work, as we... Yeah, okay, it, it even works significantly better using the game's performance mode with high settings. I actually got 190 FPS on average and 1% lows of around 78 FPS because, you know, the CPU in here is so freaking fast it's on par with an i7 14700K desktop CPU and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, 190 FPS at 4K is pretty neat, isn't it? I guess your TV's refresh rate isn't that high, or is it? Alright, I, I get it. Multiplayer is fine, but a new AAA game like Kingdom Come Deliverance won't run very well, right? Unless you're happy with medium settings and FSR set to performance, in which case it actually looks fabulous with so much detail, even in the trees, etc. Running with around 62 FPS on average. That just kinda blew my mind the first time I saw it, to be honest. Though sure, we're using FSR and performance, but hey, most people do use some kind of upscaler at 4K, and FSR is going to get even better in the near future. What about GTA 5 on high settings at native 4K? Um, well, it's still good enough for around 95 FPS on average, with 66 for the 1% lows. Again, native 4K, high settings, on a night GPU. Sure, whatever, I mean... That is obviously perfectly playable on any screen. And I know, the game is kinda old right now, but still, let's let's just try another game instead. Okay, what about Elden Ring? Well, to be honest, it didn't run as good as I've expected. At least using the medium preset and native 4K, which resulted in around 42, sometimes almost 60-ish FPS, while the average was more like 45, with some dips to the high 30s. I mean, it is playable, despite some people denying that, but, you know, even Dark Souls 1 was capped to 30 FPS, so come on, get good or whatever. Well, at least at 4K it's not as blurry as usually, so probably even low settings would be okay, despite the lack of proper anti-aliasing. For Diablo 4 I only used FSR on balanced in combination with medium settings and that resulted in an average of 66 FPS with 1% lows of 45. Probably a bit less FPS in some 4 player party scenarios, but in general, playable just fine I guess. Keep in mind that with this tablet's native resolution of 2560x1600p, we would get quite an FPS boost in every game, while still looking sharper than 4K on a regular monitor with that pixel density here. For Baldur's Gate 3, using FSR is a good idea as well, since otherwise there would be heavy freezes and quite some stuttering. But with FSR on performance and medium settings, well, around 50 FPS on average and 1% lows of 31, running around the whole town of Baldur's Gate in the third act. And that is perfectly playable for a round-based game like this. I think even 60 FPS might be possible with some tinkering around with FSR on and or probably lowering the settings a bit, but to be honest, in this game I would actually kinda lock the FPS to 30 and use the high settings that can achieve that, but that's just me. Now what about Cyberpunk 2077? We won't get stable 60 FPS here, right? Hell yes we would. With medium settings and FSR on performance we are actually getting 62 on average with 40 for the 1% lows, though I have to admit the frame time graph doesn't look as flat as I would like it to be. 
Just for fun, I also actually just briefly did set ray tracing to ultra, combined with ultra settings at 4K with FSR and performance, and the result can be admired in that 20 FPS slideshow here. Um, I mean, if you don't move, like at all, it looks quite nice actually. Uh, so just sit in a cafe and turn on ray tracing, I guess. However, Dropping the resolution to 1440p, ray tracing is actually possible with 30fps plus as it seems. Well, with FSR and performance and it kinda gets quite blurry already now and at 1080p that even got me 45fps. Unfortunately we won't get 60fps on average for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle if we're using medium settings with FSR and performance at 4K at least. 45 to 55 SPS is what we get in that case, depending on the area of the map, of course. But with low settings and FSR set to ultra performance, we're blasting the 60 FPS mark and the average was now 68 FPS with decent 1% lows. However, there is once again some way to play this new AAA game at 4K on this integrated GPU, so I think it's just fair to claim that 4K is now possible on iGPUs, officially playable. Now to be honest, I was sure that Rocket League, of all games, would not be an issue at 4K even maxed out. But it turns out it is for some reason. At least, look at that frame time. But wait, I, I can't actually see the spikes in the gameplay, so that might be a bug here. Kinda weird. Well, the average FPS seemed to be at around 77, and I sh** you not. I scored three fantastic goals in that exact match. Well, okay, one of them was pretty mean, but... That was on purpose, of course. I guess what I want to say is Rocket League is fine at 4K and maxed out settings. What a surprise. Who would have thought that? I also f love last second goals, man. And last but not least, I wanted to see what Trine 2 would do. Maxed out at native 4K, it actually hits the 100 FPS cap while still looking as cozy, magical and neat as ever. And I'm pretty sure there are hundreds and thousands of other lighter games like that that would just run as well at 4K on the Radeon 8060S in that ASUS ROG Flow Z13 tablet we're talking about here today. Also, please make sure to check out my full review of this 2-in-1 tablet, uh, whatever you want to call it later. I will link it in the description um, and the comments below. And that's already all for today's video. If you like the content, make sure to like and or hit subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and tschüss.